In this example, we're going to see how Seek's prediction tool can be utilized in predicting heat exchanger maintenance events using historical data. The premise here is that heat exchangers begin to foul over time, which leads to reduced efficiency. Therefore, we need to take the unit offline for cleaning. Historically, you may have done this on a regular schedule, but this could mean you're taking the unit offline more frequently than needed. Alternatively, you may have waited too long and had to cut flow rate due to unplanned shutdowns, which can eat up precious time and become very costly. So in this example, we need to figure out how to monitor and quantify a degradation in performance and use that to predict time until failure so we can schedule maintenance accordingly to minimize downtime in the long run. Our solution involves a predictive model based on multiple operating conditions. As new operational data becomes available, the model can be retrained in order to give an updated calculation as we approach a given maintenance event. Additionally, Seek's ability to overlay current and past cycles can help with the identification of fouling events. The result is a transition to risk-based maintenance scheduling, which can save $10,000 per year per heat exchanger the prediction is applied to. This figure below includes a maintenance report created in Seek Organizer Topic, which includes images, charts, and KPIs generated in Seek Workbench. While working through this solution, one of the first things we need to ask ourselves is, what are we seeking to learn or optimize about the process? In this case, we want to see how fouling is related to performance degradation over time. Other things we may want to keep in mind are the engineering and predictive models available to us. This may shape the route we take to find an answer based on what data is available to us and any instrumentation issues we may encounter. In an ideal world where all of our instrumentation is working correctly, we're able to use first principle engineering models. In reality, this is often not the case, meaning that we must change our approach. Something else we should consider is the quality of our underlying data and any data cleansing that needs to take place. As with any model inside or outside of Seek, if the data isn't cleansed before building the model, it will not be very representative of the actual process behavior. With that said, let's go ahead and hop over to Seek Workbench to continue this analysis, which has been broken down into five major steps. First, let's gather the process data that's available to us. Here I've selected a little over two years of flow and temperature data from our hot and cold streams. Next, we need to identify periods of interest. We've identified low flow periods using value search and can extend these capsules by 48 hours using the grow function to create a downtime condition. Now we can use custom condition to define a heat exchanger cycle. Step three involves some data cleansing. We need to remove downtime periods and outliers from the data with Seek's intuitively named functions. Repeat the process for all six signals. In step four, we're going to quantify any loss in heat transfer coefficient by using these formulas. First, we calculate the duties using our cleanse signals. Next, we find the log mean temperature difference. Last, we solve for U, which is the heat transfer coefficient, where Q is the heat transfer duty and A is the heat transfer area. Finally, we can start assembling our predictive model. We're going to need a time counter to signal showing how many days we're into the current cycle. To do this, let's hop over to the formula to take a look at the time since function. By specifying our heat exchanger cycle condition and one day, the signal increments by one each day. By specifying the downtime condition, we're telling it not to increment during those days. Now we can start to model the heat transfer coefficient as a function of time, flow, and temperature. We need to create a scalar forecast for both low and high flow to account for both operating modes. Next, we use splice to extend these signals into the future, covering the full heat exchanger cycle. Finally, we use our forecasts and time counter as inputs to our model. Let's take a look at our high and low flow UVAL predictions before displaying the final model. All we did was specify the signal to model along with the input signals, training window, and model type. Now that we've successfully built a model, we need to discuss monitoring. 
let's specify a minimum U value of 30 and a warning U value of 35. Next, let's create conditions for both of our predictions, intersecting our warning U value as they approach the minimum U value. Now we can combine these two to create a required maintenance condition, as shown at the top of the trend in red. At this point, we've completed our analysis in Seek Workbench. We can now pull all of the Seek content into an auto updating dashboard using Seek Organizer Topic. This dashboard compares the model we just built with another method to predict time until required maintenance. To share this with our team, we can send out a presentation link by clicking on this Get Link button at the top right of the screen. Once your colleagues have this link, they can begin real-time equipment monitoring. Thank you for watching.